Good day. Welcome to our asynchronous session for today. So this is Surgeon Michael Pastor, and you can call me Sir JM. I will be the one who will give an overview about physical education. So before we start our session for today, let us first have our opening prayer. So in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Prayer for good health. I offer you my mind. I seek the mind of Christ in all things. Freed from anxiety and fear. Filled with wholeness and wellness. Today I offer you my spirit. Your, I have been delivered again. Your spirit dwells deeply within me. My spirit is alive in you. Freed from depressive thoughts and critical thinking. Today I offer you my body. May it be a temple dedicated to you, O Lord. A place for you to live and reign. May I be mindful of what I eat and drink. May I be watchful of my sleep and rest. Lord, not now, I offer you my whole being. Present my mind, spirit, and body to you. Come and take me as a living sacrifice. This day of every day. May I ever glorify and worship you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So again, welcome to our asynchronous session for today. So before we start our discussion, let me ask you a question. Okay, so since you already have an idea of what our discussion is, since I already presented to you that this particular topic or session will revolve around the overview of physical education. So um, I am Sir Gem again. So I, as we go to this particular session about the introduction in physical education, at least you will, ha you will have an idea or a certain learning that you will get from this session. So let me start this session by asking you, my dear student, can you name the only subject in the school that promotes physical and emotional health, helps children learn better, and cultivates the character that they need to be productive adults. Can you, uh, I'll give you five seconds to think about that particular subject that I'm asking you. Correct. That is physical education. So physical education should be considered as a core subject, a subject that everyone could, I should take. Because when we talk about wellness and health, there is no exemption. And we can only optimize health through doing physical activities. Although some people will consider this as the least important subject, they are wrong because as a matter of fact, the crisis that we are facing as of this moment is a health issue. Okay? So for now, let me give you a tour or an, an overview or an orientation of what physical education is. Okay? So let's start. When we say physical education, my dear student, it is an integral part of the educational program designed to promote the optimum development of the individual physically, socially, emotionally, and mentally through total body movement in the performance of properly selected activities. So it is integrated in a way that it is very holistic in approach. Okay, because the physical, the social, the emotional, and mental aspect of the human person is being developed through doing properly selected activities. When we say properly selected activities, those are the activities which are anatomically correct. 
and based on science. Okay? So physical education is under science because all the physical activities that you are performing can be explained by science, especially the role of gymnastics. Okay? So that's how... Um, that's what physical education is. It is an integral part of the curriculum or educational curriculum or educational program. So from kinder to elementary to junior high school, senior high school and college, there is physical education. So it's ironic because although that is part of our educational program, only people, only few people can appreciate what physical education is. So the challenge for you, my dear student, is to integrate physical education in your day in your everyday life especially in doing physical activities because based on what i can see as of this moment younger people are not working out okay so it means that they are high they are in high danger okay and since they are not working out they are in a high danger you know it's a pathway to chronic diseases and early death so when you are living a sedentary life, my dear students, yeah, it's a um, this particular course or subject is an eye opener for you because living a sedentary life will never give you an assurance to live longer. Okay, so yeah, let's continue. So now let's proceed to the functions of physical education. So a moment ago, I already gave you the definition of what physical education is. Okay? So now let's proceed to the functions of physical education. When we say functions, these are the roles, okay, of physical education or PE program. Let's start. So we have three major functions of physical education. The first one is biologic function. The second one is the integrative function. And the third one is social function. So it means that it is very holistic in a way that those uh, the functions do not only limit in one aspect. It's not only, I mean, it's not only limited in a certain aspect. Okay. Now let's proceed first with the, uh, with the biologic function. So when we say biologic function, it refers to the enhancement of individual's growth and development through body movement. Okay, so doing some exercises can enhance your body parts or your anatomical, um, yeah, an your anat anatomical aspect of your well-being. Okay, diba? Um, yeah, so it has an effect to um, to your biological, um, what do you call this, structure. Ah, diba? When you do some exercises, your muscle is being enhanced. Kapag hindi naman, we have this thing that we call muscle atrophy. Okay? So, yeah. So, refers to the enhancement of individual's growth and development through body movements. Okay? Another one is um, integrative function. When we say integrative function, it refers to the personality integration achieved through participation in properly selected physical education activities. These are the effects of participating in physical activities into your life or to your um, personality. Okay? That's why, diba? Um, a very good example of this is before we proceed to social function is doing some exercises. It gives you a certain feeling because when you do a certain exercise, one of the neurotransmitters that being um, um, released by your brain is the endorphins or the uh, feeling good feeling. Okay? Uh, the feel good feeling. So, um, you know, that particular in, um, neurotransmitter, the endorphins, treat some mild case of depression and anxiety. So in a way that it is very low cost and effective, it is also a natural way of dealing with stressors. Okay? So another is the social function. When we say social function, it, can, it is consists of transmitting values and standards that are consistent with the needs of and ideals of the society. Diba? In physical education, there are team sports which will really enhance your camaraderie, your collaboration to win a certain game. So it has a social function. So again, when we talk about physical education, the functions of this are, you know, holistic in approach. Okay, so now let's proceed to the objectives of physical education. When we say objectives, these are the targets of physical education. We have four 
objectives. So again, it is holistic in approach, not just diba, physical education, akala niya sa physical lang. No, it's not. It is holistic. That's why ang objective niya dapat ma-target niya ang apat na aspect of a human, be of a human being. And those are physical development, social development, emotional development, and mental development. Okay? So, yeah. Physical development through carefully selected physical, selected physical education activities, an individual who participates actively will develop and maintain good health and high level of physical fitness. So our fitness is a, what they call this, is an investment. We cannot reach a certain fitness level if it is not gradual. So as early as of this moment, people, um, stop the sedentary life, especially if you are attending online classes. So it means, my dear students, that since you are attending um, online classes, see, by your your lifestyle is very monotonous in a way that you wake up, you, you eat your breakfast, sit down and attend online classes, eat for your lunch, attend online classes, rest, sleep, and your daily routine is being repeated. I'm not referring to all of you, but majority of you. I know that because um, I am just 22 year old guy, 22 pa lang pa ako, and then I'm I'm also studying for my masters. But the thing is, I cannot really avoid sedentary life. That's why um, when we say physical activities, although we are doing online learning, it is self motivated. Kahit anong setup natin, ang eagerness to do physical activities is coming from our heart, from the intrinsic motivation that we have, okay? The acquisition of physical skills can motivate an individual to participate further in physical activities. Hence, his growth and development will be enhanced. So, in doing physical activities, it is self-motivated. That's why you have to do a certain activities in your life. Avoid sedentary life. Another is social development. So your participation in physical act education activities provides opportunities for the development of desirable social traits needed for adjustment to general it's adjustment to social life in general. So diba, um, in your PE classes, you are being divided to groups or in diba, in PE1, you will create some exercises together with your group mates and it um, enhances your social skills. Okay? In PE2, you are expected to perform rhythmic activities. There are social dances, folk dances with a partner. Diba? So your social skills is being, are, are being enhanced. The, the next one is for your individual dual, dual sports. Although you are playing individual, you, all ha, you also have your opponent. So you can communicate by following the idea of sportsmanship. Dual sports, two by two, you socialize. Teams, and also for your PE4, team sports. Again, camaraderie, collaboration of the team is very much needed. Okay? So there, these are some worthwhile traits that, um, being enhanced through doing physical activities. The first one is friendliness. Okay? Friendliness. Okay? Good sportsmanship. When we say sportsmanship, it is very cliche that um, whether we, lean or, we win or lose, we have to accept it and we have to play a good sportsmanship. So it, it's very specific, good sportsmanship. Cooperation, okay? Another is honesty in group, comp group competition, sorry. So you have to be honest. You don't have to cheat during competitions and respect for rights of others, which is the very fundamental thing that we have to remember in physical education. Another, my dear students, is the emotional development. The informal nature of physical education offers opportunities for self-expression emotional mastery. Your emotion, uh, your emotion should be expressed through doing physical activities. Okay? That's why your self-confidence, your self-efficacy should be enhanced, your courage, your self-reliance, the determination, and self-control. So those things can be developed by doing physical activities under physical education. That's why when we talk about physical education, it addresses all the aspects of a human person. The last one is the mental development. Through participation in physical education activities, the individual develops his mental, his or her mental capacities as he learns the mechanical principles underlying movement. As he acquires knowledge and understanding of rules and strategies of games and sports, and as he discovers 
as he or she discovers ways of improving his movements in gymnastics and dance. So sorry for my PowerPoint presentation if it's very sexist. So it's when we say physical education, it is inclusive. It is for ev everyone. Girl, boy, or whatever gender preference that you have, even the LGBT. Okay? So it is inclusive. Everyone is welcome in doing physical activity, especially in physical education. So um, I know that I'm talking too fast because in this asynchronous session, I have to provide a, 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 a lot or a comprehensive orientation of what physical education is. So this is just a sneak peek of those things that you are going to um, experience in your PE class. So in PE, PE class, always remember as the objectives of physical education, it will always benefit your body, mind, and spirit. And also your resilience in doing physical activities and your perseverance, okay, especially in biologic function. You will only enhance a certain muscle or a certain body part if you do physical activities or enhance that through physical activities. And that's why your character traits is impliedly being developed in doing this particular um, subject. Okay, so I hope that I know that I'm talking too fast because I have to um, just give you a rundown of what will happen in this particular setup or particular course that you enrolled. Okay, so that's why I am pro that diba, when we say education, it's a fundamental right. So since PE is physical education, physical education is a fundamental right. It means that we all have a body. We all have health, we all have fitness, and we have to enhance that through doing physical activities. Okay? So that's why you have to be very particular since the crisis or the war. Yeah, when I say war, this, are, this is the crisis that we are experiencing as of this moment. Um, since we are experiencing crisis with regard to um, the pandemic that we are experiencing, always remember that is a what do you call this? That is a health issue. That's why we have to be healthy through doing physical activities. Okay? So, yeah. So, these are the physical education program. So, physical education program is not limited to those things that we offer in schools. We can find physical education programs everywhere. Okay? So, let's start. The, the first one is regular class program. It is, is, uh, it is instructional in nature. So, just like the PE classes that we have, maybe online or physical, you know, it is a continuity of movement experiences designed to help the individual gain movement skills and concepts that will enhance his ability to function effectively and happily in all his, his or her experiences, whether social mental or physical again it's not only his it is inclusive it is for everyone okay maybe the source that i have that we have is just um you know uses this particular pronoun okay so yeah it provides a continuity a progressive way of teaching physical activities so always remember that diba when you were in senior high school especially in pe1 when you were in, in grade 11 the different principles of exercise was discussed the reversibility um overload principle progression principle specificity and other um and other principles those things are being applied in this particular um phase or program in physical education okay so the activities in physical education so when we see activities these are the things that we do in physical activities the first one is core activities Later, we will see what is core activities or what are core activities under physical education. The second one are related activities. And then the th third one, my most favorite is the adapted activities or spe um, special physical education. These are the physical activities or phys uh, these are the programs designed for those people with special needs. And that is, um, you know, that is my favorite part because I love teaching those, um, I love teaching physical activities, those people who need guidance in doing physical activities. Okay, so I hope that you are still learning, although I am talking too fast because I'm just giving you a tour on how and what are the things that you have to remember or ano yung mga baon nyo as you take your physical education journey in Ateneo. 
Okay? So let's proceed. Core activities, these are the main activities which are introduced to carry out the objective of the objectives of, of the program. Yan po yung regular na ino-offer sa academe. Okay? Yung mga activities na pinapagawa talaga sa inyo. Halimbawa, um, in physical education, one, the emphasis of that is physical fitness. When we say physical fitness, later I'll discuss to you the introduction of that and how you should see physical fitness as a person. Okay? Another one is PE2 dances, fundamentals of rhythmic activities. The dance events or the dance the dance performances are those core activities that we offer for you to really um, immerse yourself to the subject. The next one is for PE3, the individual dual sports, the arnis, the badminton, the table tennis, the lawn tennis, and other sports which is being played alone and with a partner. And the 4PE4 team sports, basketball, volleyball, soccer, futsal, and other traditional and non-traditional um, dance, um, sorry, sports. Okay, so yan. Another is related activities, the co-curricular activities, which are scheduled to enrich the learning experiences of the children. A very good example of this are intramural. So later, we will discuss intramurals and extramurals, but those are considered as, th those also... Um, also, those are considered as related activities. Okay? So, the last one is adoptive or adopted physical activities or adopted activities. Specially designed or selected activities for those learners who deviate from the normal children. So, these are the things that I really love. I love teaching children and those people with special needs, especially in the field of physical education. So, don't worry. There's... There's a lot of teacher in Ateneo, especially in college, that specialize in teaching physical activities or physical education for those people with special needs. So don't worry. Okay? So, yeah. So now let's proceed to the extra class program under um, physical education. Okay, so the first one is is recreate. When we say extra class program, by definition, these are recre. Um, this is recreational in nature. In fact, attendance to this program is voluntary, so it's not required. So because this is just an extra activities that we offer, um, it is just in the other related activities. Okay, as we discussed a moment ago, this gives the opportunity for further development or practice of the skills learned in the regular class programs. It is the application of what we of the things that we learned in regular class program. A very good example of this is the intramurals. The theory is being discussed through the regular class program, but it is being applied through ex extra class program. The activities are usually held outside school hours, so these are co-curricular, okay, or sports organizations, or intramurals and extramurals. So, isa isa natin siya. So, these are the activities under extra class program. The first one is intramurals, okay. Next is extramurals. Field demonstration and exhibition groups. Now, let's see them one by one, my dear students. When we say intramurals, these are competition of teams within the same school. Kaya nga intra. The word intra means sa loob. Okay? Um, examples of which are dance intramurals, gymnastics intramurals, intramurals and sports intramurals. So, tandaan nyo lang sa intramurals, those are the sporting events or the intramural itself as the activity, as a part of formation and student activities inside the campus. So, the, there are several teams. So, the Kali, the, there are different colleges who compete to one another to, or to each other or different teams that really compete for a certain trophy inside the school. So, the scope of this is just inside the school. Unlike when we say extramurals, extra labas, okay? Competitions of teams from different schools. So there are already different schools which um, are competing from one another, okay? So yan. So intramurals sa loob, extramurals sa labas, okay? So sa loob, different teams lang or colleges or um, grade levels or yeah. Or uh, extramural yung school na. A very good example of extramural is, di ba pagkatapos natin sa school, we have the district meet. For those people who are living in a city, we have division meet or city meet. For those people living in a municipality, they have provincial meet. And yung mga nasa city meet since, um, um, oh no, oh no, uh, uh, sorry, auto, 
autonomous sila, um, they will proceed no, to the um, regional, okay, or palarong Bicol in our context. For those people na nag-provincial meet, yun na nalo sila na mag-represent mag sa palarong Bicol. Okay, next is field demonstration for... Um, One of the schools that I really love about field demonstration is the Camarines or National High School. They are, they are very good when it comes on field demonstration or field demo. A kind of activity or activities where most, if not all, the children take part of the purpose of informing the public of the activities in physical education. So we have the mass demonstration, yung sabay-sabay na nagbumagawa ng routine in a certain space. Okay? Um, The, the Camarines National High School always present kung ang, what we call this, kung ang event ginaganap dito sa Naga, the, especially the Paral Palarong Bicol, they are the one who performs. Okay? So, yeah. So, exhibition groups especially train students to perform on certain occasions. So, it means that there are some um, invited guests. Okay? For example, there are some... Dance com uh, cheer dance competitions here in Naga where there are invited performers from UP or NU. Okay? So, yeah. Exhibition groups. Because they are invited, they are the trained students, okay? To perform in certain occasion. So, now let's proceed to the legal basis of physical education. Why is it that you are discussing, you are attending physical education classes from kindergarten up to college? Manang katapusan, PE na naman. Again, PE is very important, especially that we have this particular pandemic. It is the only subject that will make you healthy. And the bottom line of everything that we have now as of this moment is our health. Because we have this cliche that health is our wealth. And it is ironic in a way that although that is a cliche, many people um, disregard that. Okay? So now, let's see what is the legal basis of education or physical education. So legal basis, definition, importance of physical education is part of our curriculum. The importance of physical education as a part of the curriculum is highlighted in the 1986 Philippine Constitution, Article 6, Article 14, Section 19. Sorry, it's Article 14, Section 19. Okay. I just want to make some clarifications. The 1986 um, Constitution, there are some books in physical education which states that it is under 1986. But the 1986 and 1987, it is, um, there are some clarifications with regard to that. But I want you, my dear student, to use 1987. But 1986 is, is also correct. Okay? So it is highlighted in 1987 Philippine Constitution, Article 14, Section 19, which states that physical education Yeah. The state shall promote physical education and encourage sports programs, league competitions, and amateur sports, including training for international competitions, to foster self-discipline, teamwork, and excellence for the development of a healthy and alert citizenry. That particular legal basis will answer your question while we are studying physical education from kindergarten up to college. Okay? So, yan, yeah, sendo. Ano may PE na naman? Pun pakadto hanggang ngunyan may yung katapusan because it has a legal basis. Because the state shall promote physical education and encourage sports programs. That's why may palarong pambansa. City meet and national competitions. Okay? Because it is mandated by our constitution. The, high, the, the highest governing law or the supreme law of our land. The Philippines. Okay? Here in the Philippines. Okay, now, that is the paragraph one. Yeah, the state shall promote, etc. It is verbatimly um, stated there that the state shall promote physical education. On the paragraph two, we have all educational institutions should undertake regular sports activities throughout the country in cooperation with athletic clubs and other sectors. Why is it that we are... Um, We are promoting physical education, or even the state promotes physical education. Again, we have to develop healthy and alert citizenry. The citizens in our country should be healthy and alert in a way that they can do the task being needed. That's why, diba, before we have the mandated ROTC and there are some issues, that's why we only have NSTPS at this moment. Okay? And that is being backed up by physical education because... Um, diba, in the history of physical education, before um, the 
one of the aside from China because they live a sedentary life because of the topography of the land and the great walls since they already have great wall naging masyado na silang they they consider physical education as an activity to be taken for granted that's why nag nag uh, like, uh, sakit sila and then they developed um medical gymnastics okay another one my dear student is the role of greece before greece was divided into two major states the athens and uh, sparta the athens focuses on the beauty of the physic and the sparta focuses on military training as their view in physical education another physical education is an integral part of the school curriculum that is designed to the total development of individual physical mental social and emotional aspects through properly selected physical activities and it was repeated as i explained our um as i discussed the overview this particular slide was already presented on the first part of our discussion okay so yeah now let's proceed to the physical fitness since i said sorry pipiyok na since it is the um it is one of the first topics in consider to consider in doing physical education especially that we have to be fit as of this moment okay to avoid the to avoid the weak to avoid um the weakness of our para you know para maiwasan natin mag anong immune system natin bumigay okay para yan so when we say physical fitness it is a physical condition where an individual has the capacity to everyday task without a feeling of exhaustion and still has enough energy to perform ex extra activity of his own choice okay so if ever he experiences fatigue he can easily recover and can indulge further after a rest period another definition of physical fitness it is the capacity of our body to do a certain activity or task without undue fatigue and still having a reserved energy in times of emergency so yan lang naman ang ibig sabihin ng physical fitness it is a condition Okay, which an individual has the capacity to everyday task or to do a certain task without feeling exhausted. Okay, and still has enough energy to perform extra activity in case that there is an emergency or you have another activity because of your own choice. Okay, if have if ever he, I don't know why the the gender being used on the pronouns here is very sexist, is very male. You know, experiences fatigue and he can easily recover. Okay, he or she. And everyone can still recover and can still indulge for their activity after a rest period. So another, I want to emphasize in physical education that rest is also important. Diba? One of the principles of training is the rest and sleep. For your body to recover, to avoid fatigue, you have to have a rest. And that's why you have to sleep so that you can have a complete recovery after being exhausted after performing a certain task okay so there these are the importance of physical fitness the first one is the physical fit person works without becoming over fatigued okay because since the, it is progressive by nature and doing physical activities every day will really lessen a chance for you to experience fatigue because it's a matter of conditioning that's why the progression principle as a principle of training you have to apply that and in computing progression principle you have to find the five percent of the repetition that you are doing for example as of this moment you are doing oh, lang, ha? Lang to. Um, you are doing i know okay you are doing 100 push-ups okay though so tomorrow you will do five a 105 push-ups there will be an additional five because dapat may five percent na pag change or you can do it after a week maybe so since that that is for those athletic person naman. he accomplishes his work with a minimum stre stress correct he can face life's problem with relatively better outlook yeah, and so it's all about how you see things. He enjoy participating in outdoor and sports activities. So my social life ka. Okay, good physical health contributes to self-confidence and poise. So your aura, your health is being optimized through doing physical activities. It gives a person a feeling of security. So um, yeah, and feeling mo secured ka palagi because your health is being maintained. Okay, hindi yung, um, you will, if you really do not, do physical activities you will really feel insecure that's true 
Oh, can you see my confidence I, uh, as I speak here? So although I'm stuttering, I am still able to, de to um, deliver the lesson, okay? Um, clearly. So that's the confidence that can give you if you do physical activity, especially I'm teaching physical education, <laughs> okay? It enables him to mingle with people at work and at play with satisfaction. So there is certain sat satisfaction. Your ego is being fed in doing physical activity. So those are the importance of physical fitness. So these components of physical fitness will be discussed to you by your teacher in PE. I'll just give an idea of what are those things. Again, I'm just giving you an overview or an introduction to physical education. So we have two types of um, components, under two major types or two major components under physical fitness, the health-related fitness and the skill-related fitness. Okay, when we say health-related fitness, those factors are related to how well the system of your body works. So it is already built into human. Meron na po tayo nito. Okay, the first one is cardiovascular fitness or as it is also known as the, the cardiorespiratory endurance. So you can use any of those term, terminologies I have said. The ability of the circulatory system, such as your heart and blood vessels, to supply oxygen to working muscles during exercise. It is the capacity of your body to deliver oxygen into your different body parts. Kaibaga pa nagigibok ang aerobic exercises, nagahangos-hangos ka. Aerobic, it needs air. And your, um, when you inhale the oxygen, your blood will, will, will distribute the, the oxygen into your different body parts so that it will be sustained. Body composition, the relative percentage of body fat compared to lean body mass, such as the muscle, bone, and water. So the computation, the ratio of those things into your body. And we can measure body composition through computing our body mass index or BMI. And we can compute that through what particular formula? Weight over height in meter squared. So that is the standard. So one of the things that you have to remember in computing for the BMI is... There are, look for the standard depending on your race. So the thing here is every race has a different body composition. The Americans has different body compared to Asians, the Europeans and the British people, yeah, such as the Europeans and etc. They have different build, body build. So it means that their body composition is also, uh, also differs. Okay. Yeah. Flexibility, the range of movements possible at various joints. So it just simply means the capacity of your joints to move when it's full range of motion. Your itong, um, flexibility, do not complicate things, ha? Uh, the flexibility split, no, it's not. A simple movement of the joints, halimbawa pag arog mo lang ka iyan, that is flexibility because your joints are moving on its full range of motion. Muscular strength, the amount of force that can be produced by a single contraction of a muscle. I advise you people that you should see muscular strength siya, one repetition to 13 repetitions. Okay? 30, uh, 14 to certain thing. I, th I, th I think that is 30, that is muscle um, strength endurance. And 30 pataas, that is endurance. So it depends on a certain repetition or a certain resources that you are using. Okay? So muscular strength, the amount of force that can be produced by a single contraction of a muscle, si pag push mo lang. Okay, but 1 to 13, that is still considered a strength. On the other hand, muscular endurance, the ability of a muscle group to continue, uh, to continue muscle movement over a length period of time or a length of time. So it means that there is already a repetition. That's why it is endurance because it is being done through a prolonged period of time and also it has repi. Sessions. Okay, so I hope that you are still learning, although I'm just discussing and, and we don't have any interaction at all. But anyway, this is an asynchronous session and that's how it works. Okay, so um, I have something here. Um, give me a moment. So yeah. Pala naman pala. Okay, now let's proceed to the skill-related components. So, ang health-related components is for everyone. Okay, because it talks about how, we're, the system, how the systems of our body work. On the other hand, we have the skill-related components. Those aspects of fitness which can form the basis for successful sport or activity participation. Okay, so this when we say the first, um this... Um, this is the basis for successful sport or activity participation. So if you are aiming to participate in certain sporting events or a certain sport 
active sporting activities, you have to have these particular things. Okay, but it is better that uh, even a single person, which is which do not participate in sports, should also develop these components. The first one is the speed, the ability to move quickly from one point to another in a straight line. The amount it talks, it also talks about the amount of time you travel from one point going to another point. But it's not only limited there. We can also associate um, speed in doing physical movements very fast, okay? Or fastly. So, do a siya from um, the amount of time you travel from one point to another point, and the other one is doing the physical activities or movements in a fast pace, okay? So, that's it. Agility. Um, the ability of the body to change direction quickly. Do not be confused with speed and agility. Speed talks about the amount of time you travel from one point going to another point in a straight line. Okay, a straight line. When we say agility, it is the ability. Abil it, it's your. It is your ability to change direction. Okay. So since it is your ability to change direction, it means that. Um, yeah, pag mo direction, in, so the direction is not fixed, okay? So it's not in a straight line. Yeah, um, always remember sa speed, straight line, sa agility, zigzag, okay? So yan, yeah, uh, sorry, balance, the ability to maintain an upright posture while still or moving. There are some people who has a problem with balance, especially for those people with vertigo or pes planus. Pes planus is also known as flat-footed. Yung flat-footed kang, ano, Yung paa mo po, flat talaga siya. Matitas mo yun kapag na, lagay ka ng, um, sa pa, um, lagay ka sa cardboard or sa any platform ng pulbo, then tapakan mo, tapos lakad ka, tingnan mo talaga kung flat siya. It really, it really affects your balance. Okay po? So another is, sa balance, it is the capacity of a person to maintain an intended upward position while moving or stationary. Okay, so the next one is coordination, integration with hand and or foot movements with the input of the senses. So it is the it is your capacity to integrate different body parts to do a certain movement. Yan po, yan. Okay, the next one is the reaction time, the amount of time it takes to get moving. Um, it is the amount of time you react in, uh, into a certain stimulus or anything that triggers behavior. Always remember there that in doing it, we have to be familiar. We have to familiar in understand. I mean, in understanding reaction time, we have to familiarize stimulus response chart. So everything starts with. Um, the stimulus or anything in our environment that makes us move or triggers our behavior and then it will be um, received or perceived by our senses, the sensory organs. We have five sense organs and then the sense organs will deliver message to our brain through um, what we call the sensory neurons because that neuron is the basic unit of the um, nervous system, especially central nervous system, and then the sensory neurons will send signal. It will not deliver. Huh? Send signal to the brain, and the brain will send signal through um, through motor neurons to our going through our again send signal huh? through our what they call this glands and muscles. And then after that, we will have our behavior or reaction. Next, power, the ability to do strength work at an explosive pace. So power is also known as the combination of speed and strength. The ability to do strength work at an explosive pace. So mabilisan. Pag inserting force na mabilisan. So those are the skill-related components and health-related components. So anyway, your teacher will be the one who will emphasize this to you, especially exposing you to the different um, application of these things. So... Um, these are the questions. So these are the bottom line because we only have limited time. How to achieve physical, physically fit body? So again, regular exercise. Although we are doing online learning, physical education or physical activities are, uh, are self-motivated. In whatever setup that we have, although physical setup, kapag yung kita sa gym, nagsabi ako na mag, okay, do this physical activity. And then you do not care at all. So it's useless. Again, it talks about you, your eagerness to do the physical activities that you are expected to do. Or again, it is an investment in a way na kung anong tinatanong mo ngun yan, aanihin mo later. Hindi naman pwede na enjoy now, stroke later. Okay? Another is balanced diet. You have to take care of your body through um, doing balanced diet or through eating the, those things that those things that are healthy. 
Okay? Adequate sleep. Sleep is very important in PE. Absence of liquor, cigarettes, and drugs. Okay? Please do not try those things. Wholesome recreation and positive attitude. So again, thank you so much for listening to my asynchronous session. Um, maybe some of you are asking, I am so fast when it comes on speaking because I'm just giving you an overview of the things that you have to expect. Okay? So I just give an orientation about physical education. And anytime you can go back to this particular video. So again, thank you so much. And Dios and magbalos. Okay, bye-bye. I love you all. Good luck to your Ateneo journey. Bye-bye. I mean, good luck to your Ateneo normal journey. Okay, bye-bye. I love you all. <laughs>